Welcome to Attainable Green. I'm Jess, and today we're going to do an update on my orchid seedlings. It's been about two months since I deflasked my epidendrum orchids. This month, I had to thin out the seedlings to ensure that the viable ones would survive. The crown on some of the plants had dried up, and with no viable growth point, they're not going to survive. Although a few of the plants had started to grow roots, there was no place for new leaves to come out. So I knew that these seedlings wouldn't make it. I know this number is gonna come down before I have a very mature plant, but I think that's expected since it's my first flask and I made so many mistakes. Hopefully the other flasks would fare much better. The second orchid seedlings that I deflasked were the Dendrobium Red Dragon. These ones did much, much better. And out of the 25 or so seedlings that I deflask, I still have them all and I didn't lose a single one. So I take that as a success. There are a few small seedlings in a compote that I put together and I'm not expecting those to survive. So if they do well, I'm happy. The dendrobiums did better than the epidendrums and I think that's due to the canes. The canes provide a little bit of energy reserves for the plant before it starts to grow new roots and new leaves. It's been about a month and there are new roots and definitely some new leaves growing. So I am very excited that these ones did so much better than my first deflasking. All of these seedlings are looking very healthy. Sure, some of the leaves did dry out and some of the older canes did shrivel, but overall they look very healthy. There's no wilting and all of the leaves are very turgid. A few of the plants had a little bit of purpling on the leaves and canes, and that shows me that they're getting enough light. The purpling is the anthocyanin of the plant coming in to protect the plant. It's kind of like the plant sunblock. I think the bark and moss mix works really well in my environment, and it works with my watering schedule. So it allows for these seedlings to be very healthy, to stay hydrated, and also to dry out when it needs to be. I forgot to mention this last time, but the bottom half of the pot is filled with styrofoam peanuts. That way, I don't waste orchid medium. It allows for better drainage and it allows for more air movement. So this month, I deflasked my third orchid seedlings. It is the LC Fairy Eye crossed with Cattleya Warner Eye. This flask was definitely overgrown. The roots were circling the bottom of the pot. The agar was diminishing. It seemed like some of the leaves and roots had started to turn brown, which indicates that it's not getting enough nutrition. To start, I wanted to use a dry deflasking method. Just using tweezers, I slowly teased out a couple of the seedlings. As I progressed, I quickly realized why we shouldn't let these plants overgrow. The roots were very tangled and I had trouble trying to take out any seedlings. So I had to resort to breaking the flask removing the agar, and even then, it was a challenge. Most of the seedlings were just stuck together, I just couldn't separate them. So I decided to leave it alone and leave it as a large compote. Any of the seedlings that I happened to remove, I put in a mix of bark and sphagnum moss. This time, the ratio was about 25% bark and 75% moss. I think the smaller seedlings need a little bit more moisture. As for the large compote, I just put it in pure sphagnum moss. I have no idea what it's gonna do and how I'm gonna be able to separate it later on. I didn't really explain how I take care of these seedlings, so I'm gonna do that in this video. So first of all, all of these seedlings are in a large germination tray. I have them in individual pots, and on the bottom there's a tray to kind of catch all the water. This seems to work for me so I can have all the seedlings in one place and it's easier to move around. I place it in an east facing window that gets gentle morning light and bright shade throughout the day. I also have the window open so it has decent air movement. The daytime temperatures range from about 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit and at night it dips down to about 65 degrees. I keep the humidity between 50 and 70% and it seems to work well for me. I'm also watering about twice a week with a light seaweed solution so that it promotes root growth. I haven't added any fertilizer yet, but I know I will need to in the future. I mist the seedlings periodically throughout the day so that it has good humidity. It's fall right now, and I know that nighttime temperatures will slowly start to go down. I know seedlings are pretty sensitive, 
so I don't want the nighttime temperatures to get too cold for them. I am going to put the seedlings on a heating mat. I have a soil probe and a temperature regulator to make sure that the seedlings don't get too hot at night. Hopefully this will allow the seedlings to grow throughout the fall and winter time without too much of a slowdown. I'm keeping this pretty low tech because I don't have a greenhouse or any specialized equipment to take care of these seedlings. There's so much to learn about seedlings and I'm finding that out as I go along. If you have any suggestions on how I can improve, please let me know in the comments. I'm learning so much with each flask. Each experience deflasking is so different from each other. The dry deflasking, the wet deflasking, and this kind of hybrid one that I just did, I don't know what to expect next. I'm documenting this experience so I can share with you the different things that can happen when you're deflasking. And hopefully you'll avoid some of the mistakes that I made. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, Attainable Green, for all the latest updates. And hit the bell so you never miss an episode. Bye!